Okay, let's move out into the testing zone. We've mm -hmm. done our wrist shots. Let's play this or that. Okay, Tonight, let's do it. Uh, I might have stacked the deck in favor of a favorite of Josh's. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to give you the chance. All right. Panerai Radimir 1940, three days automatic, PAM 620. Right. Okay. Or Carl F. Bucher, Petravi Evotech Day Date. Okay, now I talked about dress watches and sports watches that could go either way the other day. I said some sports watches could pass as dress watches and vice versa. And these are two watches that I think are sitting right on the borderline. Big and aggressive, nevertheless, they're not all out tool time pieces. So Josh, which one do you pick for yourself? Hmm, so, uh, I mean, as you would assume, I I I'm gonna start off and we'll do it this way. I'm picking the Panerai. And the reason is not because I love Panerai, but, uh, and not because I don't like Booker, because uh, CFB actually creates a pretty good value play if you buy in pre-owned. So yes, they're not gonna right. hold a ton of value. So, um, but the, the great thing about the 620 is uh, it's a very interesting watch, right? So when you see that watch first, it's a 1940s um, Radio Mirror case, so it's, it doesn't have the wire lugs, it has those Luminor lugs that you see um, that they, you know, they combine the cases yeah. essentially, right? So uh, if you see the watch in person, it's almost the opposite of most Panerais, right? Most Panerais look great on the table. You put them on your wrist, they're too big, right? Would you agree? I, I, I would say so. Yeah, so this watch actually looks way, way too small on the table. You put it on your wrist and it fits like a freaking dream. Um, I, the first time I tried it on, I'm like, oh look, a lady's Panerai. I put it on and I go, oh wait, no, this is something for me. Uh, it's, it works almost the opposite of my radio mirror, my wirelug radio mirror. So the great thing about the wirelug radio mirror is that like we always talk about, so we can get the macro For shot. contrast. Right. So uh, this watch has essentially no lugs. So the entire case is what sits on your wrist. So even though it's a 45 millimeter and there's really no other 45 millimeter watch I can pull off, this watch sits on my on my wrist like a freaking dream. So the uh, the 620 is almost the opposite. So if that watch is a 42 millimeter, which can be somewhat small for most people, and it's very thin. So it actually wears like thinner than, say, like a 42 millimeter Explorer 2. It's, it's 11 millimeters, guys. 11 millimeters just to keep score. It's about a millimeter and a half less than a Submariner. Okay, so there you go. To, to put in contrast, it's it's exactly. So it's thinner than a Submariner on the wrist. So it's going to wear almost like a 40 millimeter, but because of those lugs, it compensates and makes the watch a little bit longer on the wrist. So it fits absolutely perfect. And the cool thing about it is, there's no dress watches for Panerai, right? Like sometimes I try to claim that this is a dress watch. There's for Panerai. the Douay, but that's almost like that's an unofficial Panerai right. for some purists. Exactly. So if you want to get like a a, a core piece from Panerai, it's a dress watch. It doesn't really exist. This watch absolutely can work that way. Um, it's gonna be. It's it's. What's the water resistance on this? Do you know? 100 meters. It's okay. legit. The Douay is 30 meters. That's why we say Not we legit. hesitate to call that a luminar. Right. But this is nice because, like Josh says, the 1940 case has big masculine integrated lugs. It's not like the wire lugs, no. which are graceful. Is that what you're fit, saying? Well, I, I would say they're a little bit softer, but right, they, fit, they fit more easily. This mm -hmm. is a watch that's 42 millimeters by 11 millimeters thick, but it's got a big wrist stance, which mm -hmm. means it's never going to look petite. But it's thin enough that you could pass it off as a dress watch, and with the caliber 4000 micro rotor, which is both technically interesting yeah. to you horology guys who kind of shy away from Panerai, right. and it's nice and slim. Mm -hmm. Plus with the three day power reserve, you've still got enough power reserve that you could rotate through this watch, throw on a submersible for the weekend, put this back on on Monday morning and it's still ticking. Right. It bronze of horizons for Panerai. Uh, the micro rotor, rotor is super cool. I wouldn't say that, uh, you know, listen, I, I like Panerai not because of their movements, mostly because of their, their the utility of the watch and the history and things like that. Uh, Panerai has been investing more into in-house movements and, and micro rotors, things like that, to try to, I think, broaden their, their customer base. I think it's working somewhat, uh, though I don't know many people who are thinking about like uh, intricates, intricacies of um, handmade movements or thinking, hey, Panerai is a good way to go. But you know, it, it, it does bring that side of the of the market, I believe. We have a very cool PAM 520 that I'm gonna be oh, yeah. reviewing on my Watch You Want Watch Reviews channel, cool. where you can actually see a handmade movement from Minerva in a Panerai watch. Yeah. I will Super say, cool. for me, I'm gonna go, if, if I were to pick one of these for mm -hmm. myself, uh, it, it's not a snob thing, and it's not an aversion to Panerai, because I do like the brand, and I do like the Cal 4000 micro rotor, mm -hmm. but I would go with the Carl F. Bucher Petravi Evotech Day Date, uh, because mm. one reason and one reason alone, they were ambitious enough to build a nice looking watch 
around the previously intractable peripheral rotor. Oh, yeah. uh, this is the CFB A1001 movement, and <coughs> it is a peripheral rotor. The rotor moves around the caliber. It doesn't block the center. It's not a micro rotor. This is something that Patek tried with the caliber 350 and the right. 350i. In recent years, we've seen it from Audemars in grand right? complications, mm -hmm. Vacheron in grand complications, Breguet in grand complications. How about a watch that people can actually buy? Yeah. This is a $9,900 watch. The Panerai, for comparison, is $10,000. So we are talking apples to apples price class. Here. Right. 50 meters water resistant. I take it seriously as a 50 because it has a screw down crown. So, on a different strap, I would swim with this watch. And I think you get good value because this is a largely handmade and regulated movement with a 55 hour power reserve, a very cool peripheral rotor, which you can see on the image as the black and light shaded sections of the ring around the movement and then there's a full clasp which has triggers and actually tucks the excess underneath the clasp body so i feel like even the accessories that you're getting like the strap and the clasp are a little bit more upscale sure. here plus i like the complication and there's also a philosophy here you're a minimalist you like the panerai mm -hmm. you like complications maybe the day date speaks to you right yeah it makes sense and the the thing that's drawing me back from the uh from the the Karloff Booker is the K shape, right? It's it's a it's not their main core piece, right? If they were to throw that movement, and I wonder, is that movement in with the peripheral rotor in any of their other cases? They no? are they are working it through the range. There's also yeah. the CFB A2000, which is a somewhat simplified version of it that's okay. that's found in more models. Okay. Than the Travi and, the and fact Monero that it has range. peripheral rotors, freaking awesome. The fact that it works. I mean, before that was always a stunt in <laughs> yeah. like watches that would be built in copies of 20. Yeah. So I really like that. But you know, I do think that it's a watch that sort of straddles the fence. It's not a dress watch. It's not a sports watch. It's kind of a big all-arounder. For practical purposes, it is thicker. It's 14 millimeters. It's about okay. 44 millimeters square on the wrist. Right.